Okay, hello, thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Alexander Dijkstern and I'm at the Robotics and Megatronics Lab at the University of Trent. Today I would like to talk with you about uh, 3D printing of batteries and specifically uh, our research on 3D printing of a lemon battery via fused deposition modeling and electrodeposition. First, I'll take you through a short introduction of uh, the goal of our research, and then I'll s switch to the methodology, the results, and finally the discussion and conclusion. So, uh, 3D printing, with the advancements of 3D printing, um, printing batteries, uh, and in general, electrochemical storage devices, becomes more interesting. Uh, it is expected that with the advancement of printing, uh, energy consuming electronics with integrated batteries can be printed in a single fabrication step uh, without integration or the need for assembly. At the moment, however, um, still assembly or chemically treating uh, filaments is required for this uh, type of battery fabrication. For example, on the right, you can see the work of Ray et al, where they have printed uh, anodes, cathodes, separators uh, and casings uh, with a simple 3D printer, uh, but they need assembly for this coin cell battery and they need uh, infusement or in including uh, lithium particles in the material. Since batteries require redox reactions, you need to include them in some way without assembly uh, to achieve this goal of, of structural batteries uh, that can be fabricated in a single step. Our approach for this in this research is by means of electrodeposition on 3D printing. In past research of Kim and Angel et al, uh, they've shown that you can deposit, for example, copper on uh, conductive polymer composites, which can be fabricated with a standard 3D printer with uh, commercially available filaments. And, and by means of this, we hope to achieve uh, 3D printing batteries with an FDM printer with cheap, commercially available materials uh, for a galvanic cell. The methodology. The battery chemistry is uh, taken quite simple. We have taken a classical lemon battery as a proof of concept, where we have citric acid as the electrolyte in combination with a zinc electrode as the anode and a copper electrode as the cathode, uh, where the zinc reduces with hydrogen ions on the anode and the hydrogen oxidizes on the copper cathode. Uh, where the copper is actually only included for improvement of conductivity in this case and does not react itself. So this is the layout of the standard lemon battery. For the fabrication we've used a standard uh, 3D printer, a dual material 3D printer which has do, uh, <coughs> two nozzles which can print a conductive material and a non-conductive material next to each other. Um, <clears throat> for these materials, we have used standard PLA in combination with conductive PLA, where the conductive PLA is doped with carbon black particles for getting the conductivity uh, from the brand protoplant and then the specific filament protopasta. We've taken PLA and conductive PLA for the compatibility, since uh, taking these two kinds of PLAs, they, they fuse really well. So we can make single prints with really well fused uh, dual materials. One disadvantage of the, the, the conductive PLA is the high resistivity, so it's a highly resistive material which causes a large internal resistance in our 3D prints. For the design, we've chosen a, a simple, a simple bridge-like design, two pillars with a horizontal section with two large flat electrodes touching the electrolyte. We've come to this design uh, for uh, three reasons mainly. To minimize the internal resistance, since the electrodes have quite a high resistance, we've taken them as thin and as wide as possible, so that the, the resistance in the, the Z direction from the electrolyte, from the metal in the electrolyte to the um, current collector is as low as possible. Furthermore, they have a large surface area, so a lot of metal can be deposited on a single electrode. And the third and most important reason is the uh, difference between the two electrodes shown in the figure, since we want to achieve homogeneous deposition, which is difficult because of the terminal effect, the so-called terminal effect. If you take a, a rod, a highly resistive rod, put into your electrolyte for electrodeposition, most of the metal is deposited closest to your current collectors. Since we have taken flat plates, uh, the distance from current collector 
to the metal surface is approximately the same everywhere. So the resistance uh, is approximately the same everywhere and we can achieve a more homogeneous distribution of our metal. Furthermore, we have printed our electrodes uh, laying down flat on the print bed. Uh, since fused deposition modeling introduces uh, anisotropy in the uh, printing uh, and in the z-direction the resistivity becomes the highest actually. So we have taken the z-direction very thin and, and laying flat. For the uh, electrode deposition, first the samples are treated in an ultrasonic bath with ethanol to improve weightability. Uh, and next the electrode deposition is uh, performed with a standard galvanostat. Uh, so we have three electrodes, a three electrode setup, where we have our counter electrode, which is either a big copper or a big zinc plate. We have a standard uh, silver chloride reference electrode, and our sample is connected as the working electrode. Furthermore, at the bottom we have a magnetic stirrer to uh, get a proper replenishment of our ions in the solution close to the working electrode. During the electrode deposition we measure the voltage and we control the current. Uh, and in this way, uh, through Faraday's law, we can estimate the amount of metal deposited on the surfaces. For the results, um, the estimated amount of copper was 4.1 mg and for zinc it was 53 mg. Um, where you can see the surfaces on the top right, where the zinc has a quite a rough surface with spherical uh, parts on it, and the copper has a smooth surface. Um, the zinc surface is really uh, depending on the current density you use, uh, where the current density determines whether you get a rough surface or not. And for the copper, the smooth surface was mainly achieved by organic additives in the electrolyte during deposition. Uh, and furthermore, you can see uh, the fabricated uh, 3D printed part of the battery with uh, silver paint current collectors with on top of them copper tape with wires soldered to them. Uh, this is then placed in an electrolyte bath and the bottom side is uh, deposited with the metal. For the characterization of the battery, we've performed cyclic voltammetry. Um, where we found that the open circuit voltage is around uh, 0.69 volts and the short circuit current is around 2.2 milliamps. Uh, the internal resistance was found to be 310 ohms. Uh, and during the cyclic voltammetry, we swept six cycles with uh, 50 millivolts per second rate, where we used two electrodes since we only need to know the uh, difference between the zinc and the copper electrode and we don't need to no uh, absolute voltage. Uh, we also performed two discharge measurements uh, with a discharge at 0.3 milliamperes and 0.1 milliamperes, um, and where we achieved the best capacity of 4.7 milliamps hour for the battery, uh, which gives you uh, an efficiency of 10.9%, uh, which means that if we take the energy we used for uh, depositing the zinc on the surface, um, then only 10.9% of the energy put in to get the zinc on the surface was obtained from the battery as energy. So the rest get lost somewhere in the system, which might be due to uh, bubbles on the anode. Actually, during the reaction, it's standard to have bubbles on your copper cathode because that's where the hydrogen uh, re uh, produces, uh, oxidizes, uh, reduces. Uh, but the bubbles on the zinc anode uh, might indicate a different reaction taking place, which could reduce the effic efficiency of the battery. Our current uh, belief is that this happens through galvanic corrosion, where the carbon underneath the zinc layer actually acts as cathode, uh, due to the difference in working potential with the zinc. So the zinc uh, reacts uh, reduces and then reaction takes place, um, uh, which causes electro deactivation. So there are several challenges to be uh, looked into for this current design of the battery. First of all, the electro deactivation, which gives you a limited efficiency. Secondly, the high internal resistance of the battery of 310 ohms. Uh, 
furthermore, uh, we could use a different metal pair and a different electrolyte for better performance, since now we use this simple case as a proof of concept, but more suited uh, solutions exist. Uh, and the compatibility of the uh, filaments used is uh, poor. Uh, for example, during zinc electrodeposition, we use sulfuric acid, um, and this really um, affects the PLA in the solution in the sample. You can see the discoloring on the on the PLA sample, which has really uh, changed. Finally, uh, we still need assembly of the sensor uh, with wires and a beaker glass, which in the future could be done by, for example, watertight printing and already printing wires in the sample. For future results. For future research, we would like to look at 3D printing a battery with electro deposition still. Uh, and we've now shown that this is suitable. Um, however, the highly resistive electrodes pose some difficulty. Uh, we would like to look at different geometries. Now we've taken a simple geometry, but to really print structural uh, freeform batteries, there needs to be looked into what the limitations are for electro deposition uh, for arbitrary geometries. Finally, we need to study and improve the electro deactivation to have this uh, as a working uh, method for 3D printing batteries. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the EU for funding this project. We've been funded through the Re European Research Council under the European Union Horizons 2020 Research and Innovation Program. Um, and this is my presentation. I would love to answer your questions. Thank you very much.